Okay, hi guys. Uh, this video is going to be on the three most basic sports betting tips. It's going to talk about how we make our picks, essentially the three major aspects we look for and something that most beginners should be doing if you aren't as an experienced you know, sports capper yet. And remember, if you do these three things, you will likely be in profit at the end of the year, along with bankroll management and not making too many plays. Those are the two things that sort of kill most you know, sports bats. So let's just crack on straight away. So first up, we've got trend continuation. So this is something I like to look at quite frequently. It's when winning teams carry on winning. Now, if you follow the hockey, I'm going to use the NHL in this example for the 2016-17 season. If you follow the hockey, you know that Columbus Blue Jackets, the year before, the season before, were a pretty weak team. They finished, I don't know, maybe even last, uh, definitely in the bottom half, and you know were considered an easy win when teams would go and play them. This year, I think they're currently second, only behind Washington Capitals, and might actually go on to win the league. So, you know, an incredible turnaround regardless of what happens in the playoffs. But anyway, if you were to put you know, the spread or the one unit to profit 1.x, then you would be in huge profit for Columbus Blue Jackets this season. Now, if you watched their games and saw they went on a 16 winning streak or 17 winning streak, something like that, midway through the season. Um, and this is going back to our winning teams win theory. If you look at the teams that lose quite often, sometimes they'll lose two, three games in a row and then might win one and lose, win, lose, win. And there's no sort of, there's no trend there. We can't make consistent profits when we don't know which team will turn up. Whereas winning teams, when they have a great goalie who's on fire, really strong defense, good rookies, awesome offense, speed, and also, you know, the luck and the quality as well, that means we can find good teams to bet on. So never try and continue. Don't try and look for when a team will turn it around. Instead, it's easier to predict an uptrend and a downtrend. For example, if a team wins two games in a row and they are playing a team they've historically been good against, you know, the odds are still good, then you should take that team. It's as simple as that. If they've deserved to win those previous two games as well. The next one we're going to talk about is value, probability, and odds. So I group this in the same sort of thing. I think when you've been capping for a long time, this all sort of essentially becomes the same thing anyway. The probability is obviously the likelihood of a specific event occurring. This is, can be anything in life, let alone sport. But let's say we look at the weakest team in the league to beat the strongest team in the league. The probability of that occurring is very low or lower than, say, 30%. As a result, the odds would have to be very high to make it worthwhile making this play. Okay. And then the value is the perceived difference, also known as the edge. So if you think the probability of something happening is going to be 50%, so you'd be looking for the odds to be even, which would give you a zero figure, because obviously 50% chance, 50% return on investment, that's going to be even. But say the odds were plus 120, then suddenly you have a perceived 20% edge, and you should bet those. Over time, if your probability calculations are right, however you determine those, whether it's just in your head, whether you use statistical analysis, whatever it is, if they're right over time, then you will profit. If they're wrong, then you will lose. But if you have a large enough perceived edge, so for example, if you don't take anything you believe to be under 10%, you only take 10% and above, you give yourself some breathing room as well anyway. And I use the figure 10% or above, because generally, if you can go 55% long, long term, so I'm talking you make, you know, 55,000 bets in a, you know, your career and you profit you know, those and you've made 100,000, that's an easier way to look at it, then you will be in profit and you will be in a high, high profit. Again, this assumes that you keep correct bankroll management and don't make too many plays once you have that bankroll. And then finally, we're looking at odds shopping. So finding the best odds for a specific market, this can instantly get you an extra couple of percent in the edge as well. So for example, if you think the probability of an event occurring is 50% and you can see odds of plus 105, then you might want to take this event, but you're still not sure as it's only a 5% edge. 
if you go odds shopping and you find you can get plus 110, then suddenly this becomes an easier bet. Hope that makes sense. And finally, don't be too results orientated. So this is something that I see when people try and back test a theory, which I'm huge on, is they'll come up with a theory and say, for example, okay, I saw this game, I went to this game, team A, you know, they didn't get many shots, but they looked really good last game. And I think if they can up their shots, they'll win. Or they're playing a weak opponent they've historically been good against. Or whatever your theory might be. Let's say, for example, you take team A at minus 120 to win the next game. Okay. But the result happens and you lose 3-1. Now, if you just look at that result, you might put a negative one to whatever theory you have. Okay. You might say, okay, it didn't work. It wasn't even a close game. Didn't go to overtime, whatever. But digging into the data, we can see team A had 45 shots and team B had 18. And I mean, if you know hockey, you know that generally teams, when this setup happens, this is a sort of, you know, 6-0 sort of game. But in this case, they lost 3-1. Let's say, for example, it was 2-1 and they scored an empty netter. You know, could ring off the crossbar and then bounce to a defender who shoots at home. Suddenly that two-all game has gone to 3-1 and skewed the results. So if this game was played another 10 times, team A would win more than 6 out of 10 times, probably up around 8.5, 9 times out of 10. And hence the theory that you had, however you discovered it, is solid in this particular case. So instead of taking this as a loss, as a minus 1.2 units, this should be considered a win or at least a void. Sorry about that or at least avoid, because the result you have, although it's not made you money, it's actually lost you money, in theory it was correct, and as a result you shouldn't sort of have a negative connotation to that. And that's everything. So as I said, there's only a few sort of basic tips there, but if you stick to those, you can be profitable long term. And as we get more into the series, I'll uh, start releasing stuff about more advanced and intermediate techniques and do another basic video as well for the stars. All right, let me know if you have any questions or comments below and have a good day.